For 40 days on God, Family, and Guns, we'll be focusing on God. We have a series on spiritual warfare, the end of times, the prophecy of Daniel, and the prophecy of Malachi. If you want to see our gun-related or Second Amendment-related content, you can see that on Patreon or the History of Weapons. Those links are below. One of the biggest travesties of the modern church in America is the inability to teach the law of God. The law that was given down to Moses, there's a spectrum of teaching. There's on one side such a legalistic teaching that it prevents most of your average people from accessing God. And the people that are being legalistic are hypocritical because they're of course breaking the law. And then you have the other realm where the law is very vague or that there's this, well, you're forgiven, the law doesn't apply anymore because Jesus did away with the law. Uh, both these are complete inaccurate and it is the law itself that brings our heart to God. Uh, if we look at Malachi 4, verse 4, it says, Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Now what they're talking about here is they're talking about the Ten Commandments. Um, it was in Horeb that Moses was told to strike the rock and the water would come out. And it was shortly after that that he climbed up to Mount Sinai and was given the Ten Commandments. And these Ten Commandments are is essentially for us to be aware of our brokenness, of our falters. We all fall short. Uh, regardless of what religion or denomination you are, you can never be uh, one that just obeys the laws all the time and never falters, because even if your uh, physical walk doesn't falter, your heart will falter and your mind will falter. It, the law is set there so we can be aware of our need for a Savior, because once sin entered the world, there was the need for the law. And the very last thing that Malachi says here is, remember the law. Uh, Malachi was the very last prophet before Jesus Christ had come. And, you know, and Jesus Christ himself uh, talks about not doing away with law, you know, because this, this is a big fallacy to suggest that you can break the law and then say some magic words and then all of a sudden you're forgiven and then you just continue to break the law. It's a changing of the heart. And it's, it's the relationship with Jesus Christ that then the Spirit will dwell within you and it causes you to be aware of the law. It causes you to recognize when you have fallen short. Jesus himself says in Matthew 5 verse 17, Do not think that I came to destroy the law of the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. And ultimately what a jot and a tittle is, is Hebrews wrote without, um, um, when they wrote the Old Testament, they wrote it without uh, vowels. So they would put little symbols above the consonants to give what the vowel sound would be and those are jots and tittles and he's saying nothing has changed like nothing will change he came to fulfill the law is what he came to do and what he meant by fulfill is that you know we will always be short you know what what's not preached is the fact that we're all short regardless of how righteous you may look on the inside you are falling short on the outside and even if you just tell one little lie you cannot now enter into heaven. You cannot bring your baggage into heaven because if we let just one little sin into heaven, well, heaven is now corrupt like earth and God's not going to let that happen. Uh, more so, it's a physical impossibility. Darkness cannot exist in the light. That's why people would vaporize when they're in the presence of God. Uh, they just simply can't exist in the presence of God. So we have to have this this need to cleanse us and that's what the blood of jesus christ is all about it's that he cleanses us but we have to accept that and it's not just saying well i believe because again i've said this in many videos satan believes in jesus christ 
Satan recognizes his authority, so he believes in him. So, why, you know, obviously Satan's not going to heaven. So, what is it? Well, if we look at Romans 10, um, you know, Romans is a great book on really understanding um, what it is. But if we look at Romans 10, it starts with a, verse 1 it says, uh, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer for God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law, the man who does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. That is, to bring Christ down from above, or who will descend into the abyss. That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes to righteousness, and with the mouth confesses is made to salvation. Now, this is a, oftentimes a very misinterpreted verse, because, you know, again, I, I, I would say that Satan will confess with his mouth, and he believes that Jesus is God, but he's clearly not going to heaven, so what is the difference? Well, when he says confess, he's saying acknowledge. It's acknowledging. It's not just confessing. Well, this is, you know, criminals confess. It's, it's acknowledging truth. It's acknowledging the truth and who he is and what he brings to this equation. And then the word believe is in trust. It's, it's to abide. It's in a, to entrust in him. Um, it's abiding in him. And that's really where people fall short is it's not just believing. It's abiding, it's entrusting, it, it's letting go and saying, you know what, I believe in this thing and I entrust in it. And then indwells the Spirit and the Spirit will show you the law. And as you break the law, you're aware of it. If you're breaking the Ten Commandments and you just seem to not think it's a big deal, I think you need to kind of question that. Uh, we really need to go back to Exodus 20 and read those Ten Commandments because... Uh, they didn't abolish, Jesus did not abolish them. It's an awareness. It's, it's ultimately what it comes down to is the law was set there so we can be aware that there's this moral compass that God has laid on the earth, the morality. The law was set there so we can say, well, wait a second, when it comes to these two, three, or four commandments, I'm falling short because I, I broke that commandment yesterday and I broke that commandment a week ago. And then once we realize that, if the Spirit is dwelling within, then we're going to beg God for forgiveness. And, and the, is the blood of Jesus Christ then completely cleanses us of that. Uh, but, and, and then we then have a desire to stop that thing. You know, because what preachers are not preaching is they're preaching the law or they're preaching salvation, but it's really they have to put the two together. Uh, the, the salvation is there because of the law, and that's why it's so misinterpreted, because if it wasn't for the law, we wouldn't need a Savior. Um, and that's really what the bottom line is, is we have to recognize, we have to tr confess that we're in need of a Savior, and that there's only one sacrificial lamb that can cleanse the, the, the sins of the world. And that is through the blood of Jesus Christ, and it is entrusting and abiding in that, and it changes the heart. And then once the heart changes, you then recognize when you're breaking the law. If you don't recognize you're not breaking the law, you have to question where your relationship with Jesus Christ is. If you recognize you're breaking the law, then you are filled with the Spirit. And that's kind of the, the funny thing. That's why you know Jesus also often criticized the, the people who acted all righteous, because it, and that's why he hung out with sinners, because the sinners were the ones doing it right. They were the ones saying, you know what, I see where I'm falling short, and I am in the need of a Savior, whereas in the righteous ones were like, well, I got this, I'm just going to keep on being righteous, not recognizing that we all fall short of the glory of God. So, hope this video helps. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support this channel with Patreon, that link is below. 
But the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests. So never hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.